We make things. We use our hands, minds, and machines to build, to fix, to improve. We're known as do-it-yourselfers, home improvement fans, fix-it fanatics, inventors. At our core, though, we're all makers. So let's jump in and make something. Hi, I'm Ron Hazelton. Welcome to the show. Today, we'll take a trip to Las Vegas and see what's new with this year's International Builder Show. It's a huge display of nearly anything you can imagine for home building or remodeling. If there's a trend in home improvement products, it's that things are getting smarter, from cabinets and decking to windows and accessories. So settle back and we'll cover those miles of aisles together. Later, we'll build a simple window box that can be customized to whatever size you want. So let's get started. Well, it's that time of the year again, the International Builder Show. There's a lot to see and a lot to do, so let's get started. At the Snap Power booth, founder Sean Watkins introduced his latest product. It's an actual cover plate with a built-in USB charger right inside the bottom of it. It looks just like a normal cover plate, except for down here you've got the USB charging port on the side and the entire circuit board is built right into the bottom of the cover plate there. Here's how it installs. You remove the existing cover plate with a screwdriver, and now you take our cover plate and you install it over the outlet. Now as you install it, these prongs here on the back are gonna slide around and automatically grab power from the side screw terminals on your outlet. Pop it over it, put your screw in, and you're done. That's the entire installation. No wires, no batteries, no mess. It's really quick. Now at any time you want, you've got both your outlets still available for use. You can come up at any time, you plug right into the side of it, you take your phone, and there you go. It starts to charge your phone. ASIC, a company well known for its cellular PVC building products, unveiled its new line of capped PVC decking. What we tried to do is really capture the essence of realistic wood. With the new vintage collection, we're able to really draw out the variegation. We're really able to capture that realistic, rich wood tone. The vintage collection decking material features a cellular PVC core wrapped in a very durable PVC cap or covering. The result is a deck board that's much lighter in weight than conventional wood composite, yet exceptionally strong. It's been engineered to withstand the everyday things that happen on a deck, like spilled wine, fruit punch, and hamburger grease. The PVC cap also makes the deck highly scratch resistant eliminating the worry about marks from patio furniture or pets. Slight board-to-board -board color variations, dramatic streaking, and an embossing pattern with fine texture lines all combine to make this the most convincingly real PVC decking ever. These resurfacing pavers from ASIC can transform an old concrete patio, walkway, or deck into a low-maintenance surface that's durable and good-looking. The pavers are not concrete. Instead, they're made from up to 95% recycled materials, such as tires and food containers. When it comes on a grid system, that's 16 inches by 16 inches that automatically aligns and spaces everything. So if you were installing it over an existing deck, it would actually sit right on top of that deck surface. So if it's a wood deck or an old composite deck that doesn't look like how you want it to anymore, you can actually put this grid right down on top of it and then put the pavers on there and there's drainage built in underneath so it can escape out. So you're basically giving yourself a low maintenance new paver aesthetic on top of an old deck. We have bull nose and transition pavers to go around the perimeter to give it that finished look that you're looking for. And that grid system also aligns and spaces everything. So it turns it into basically like Lego so you can't mess up any alignments or anything. It's got a lifetime residential warranty against cracking. Very good with stain resistance because it doesn't absorb moisture. It's a long-lasting product and, and a low-maintenance product as well. The top brewer from Purcell Murray brings home coffee service to a whole new level. It is, I say it in tongue-in-cheek, the world's smallest countertop coffee system. There's a spout that comes out of the countertop here that has three lines, one that does the water, one that does the milk line, uh, and one that does uh, the coffee line. Uh, and it is an incredibly low-maintenance machine in the sense that it 
uh, cleans itself after every use. The one unique thing that gets a lot of attention uh, in the beginning is the fact that it's controlled by a mobile device, either a tablet or a mobile phone. And you can see all the different recipes that you can make. You can customize them uh, here. We'll go ahead and reduce this down to one cup, reduce the foam, and maybe even the size a little bit. You hit start and that controls it because it's actually steaming the milk here at the head of it. That's actually the world's smallest steamer. And then the fresh ground coffee comes in through a separate line altogether. The engine that drives all of this is located in the cabinet below. The coffee brewer stores and grinds beans on demand, while the mini refrigerator holds a gallon of milk which it dispenses as needed. Certainty featured three new building products this year. First up, a roof that's made of metal but looks like shake shingles or tile. It's designed for faster, easier installation. The individual panels are larger. The panel itself is four courses high by one meter wide. We have had this tested, wind riven rain tested, up to 150 miles an hour and it's passed. So it's fade resistant and it's color protected for a 50 year warranty against chalking and fading. For the most part, across the United States, this can be put on over one layer of shingles. This metal roof has the same decimal level of noise as an asphalt roof. However, it's at a slightly different pitch, a slightly higher pitch. When it comes to insulating unvented attics or cathedral ceilings, spray polyurethane foams offer high insulation values. Certainteed Certispray X delivers that, but also something more. Not only are you getting the higher R value that you got in a traditional open cell foam, but this product has um, an integrated ignition barrier, which means that um, there's a fire retardancy built into the product now, and it's all in one step. Open cell spray foams also eliminate drafts or hot and cold spots. It's great because at two inches or more, you get an air barrier to protect against airflow, but it's also safer permeable, so, and that's what you want in a non-vented situation. You want the moisture in the air to be able to move from the attic out into the environment. Silent FX is designed to cut down noise that's transmitted through walls from one room to another. What we're looking at here is a highly engineered, noise-reducing drywall board. Silent FX is made up of two sheets of specially formulated drywall with a center core of an elastic polymer that absorbs sound vibration. The wall board installs like any other, but has an impressive ability to reduce noise. A lot of the testing we've done on both uh, wood framing and steel stud framing shows anywhere from a five to a 10 decibel improvement over standard drywall. Automation has come to kitchen cabinetry. Blum is featuring wall cabinet doors that lift up and out of the way with a simple touch. Another touch and they close on their own. This same technology is available for drawers that extend fully with just a tap and close with a slight push. This is especially convenient for garbage recycling bins that can be opened and closed even if your hands are full with a simple nudge of the leg. This under sink drawer makes great use of what is typically unusable space. The touchless concept is even extending into the bathroom. This ultra-contemporary toilet from Kohler is as much a sculpture as a plumbing fixture. It has a built-in motion detector that lifts the seat as you approach. For guys, breaking the light beam on the side with a foot lifts the ring. The toilet closes automatically and flushes itself after use. It even has its own multicolor lighting panel, and all this can even be controlled remotely has a touch screen remote control and with that you, you're able to really control everything. <laughs> this pull-out can and bottle storage unit from WineLogic can easily double the storage capacity of a typical base cabinet. Everything that's in the bottom two shelves is really replicated up here but people always have a problem getting to the back of the cabinet and this allows you to see what you need and then grab it easily. To simplify installation, the unit collapses to easily fit inside the cabinet, then expands once in place. You can put it where you want inside the cabinet, 
move it a couple inches and it exposes the areas for six screws to be installed either into the base of the cabinet or to a shelf. And it'll take you longer to fill it with canned goods or wine than it does to install it. The name Marvin is synonymous with high quality windows. One of the company's latest innovations is a wall of windows, floor to ceiling glass that offers superb views with indoor comfort when closed and an expansive connection with the outdoors when open. So this is our new ultimate multi-slide door from Marvin. We can go as tall as 12 feet tall, 50 feet wide. Each panel can be up to five feet. So we're talking large expanses, bringing the outdoors in. It's a design favorite for contemporary and for traditional even. We're seeing in both. So essentially, in this configuration, we have a pocketing multi-slide door. And what happens is that all of these panels are moving along the track, stacking on top of each other and moving into a wall cavity. And that's why we call it pocketing. And it completely disappears and so allows for a perfect transition from indoors to outdoors. You know, there's so much to see here, we just barely scratched the surface. But I do hope you got some great ideas from this year's International Home Builder Show. Well, here we are in East Grand Rapids, ready to help the Alietta family with some window dressing. We'd like to put a, a window box in right under the picture window in the front. I thought it would jazz up the front of the house. You know, if I've ever seen a window that was made for a window box, <laughs> this is it. Where are we going to put it? Well, I thought the box would look great right under the brick there. Uh-huh. Uh, Going the full length of the sill. Yeah, okay. yeah. I think it's about 10 feet long. Okay. And, uh, you know, I thought it would be a good mother-daughter project here. You two are mother and daughter? I thought yes. you were sisters. Well, bless you. <laughs> This is the stock or wood that we're going to be using for our project right here. It's all pressure treated lumber. Uh, I've asked uh, Mandy and Karen to go ahead and put a coat of paint on this before we put this together. It'll save us some time. Come over here, guys. Let me show you what we've got here. This is this 2 by 8 is going to be our bottom. Uh, this is a front and a back, 1 by 6. And over here, a shorter piece of wood out of which we're going to cut the ends. Okay. From the short piece of 1x6, I measure and lay out the end pieces. Now, we could cut these using a power saw, but because Karen and Mandy were new to power tools, I decided to give them a lesson using one of my favorite Japanese hand saws. Let's get this started for you, and then I'd like you to just saw right on back that down that line. All right. Okay. Just slide it back. That's great. Great. Okay, Karen. I want you to drill some pilot holes in this end piece for me. Have you ever used a drill before? No, I haven't, Ron. Uh, the premier performance. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Drilling holes in the end pieces will keep the screws we'll be using from splitting the wood. Like her mom, Mandy is a quick study on the drill. While I hold the end pieces in place, Mandy replaces the drill bit with the screwdriver bit and attaches the ends to the bottom. Getting to be a pro at this. <laughs> Push, 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 push. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, one more and we're done here on this end. Flip this over. Okay. Just use that to support our wood. Next, we get ready to attach the front and back to the bottom. First, we do a test to make sure that everything fits properly. To be flush with the end or pretty close to it. It is, that's good. Excellent. Then we once again pre-drill the holes to allow the screws to go in more easily. Now, rust-proof screws are ideal for planter boxes, but they can be unsightly. The problem is I don't want the screw heads to show. So what's the solution? Countersinking! <laughs> countersinking, that's what we're gonna do, okay? And to do that, this is a special, it's called a countersink bit. See, it's sort of shaped like a cone. We're gonna put this in the hole that we just drilled and create a little depression here. And a little bit more. About like that, okay? Little cone-shaped depression. Then we drop the screw in. Now the screw head is below the surface of the wood, so we can come back over and spackle this. You'll never know these are here. That's great. There you go. Right. But we won't rely on screws alone to hold the planter together. We'll also apply a bead of waterproof construction adhesive before we attach the front and back. Perfect. Okay. Karen, this is the front now. Okay, just lay it right on top of the glue. There you go. We're going to drive these screws in. Now, these are uh, two and a half inch long rust proof screws right in here. So we're going right down to that countersink. We won't see the heads of these because we're going to fill that up. Look at this 
girl go. Yeah, I'm very, you. very good, Mandy. Very good. <laughs> okay, this is our back. We've got a glue in place. Guys, just make sure that it's flush with the ends. So push or pull it, whatever you have to do. We use exterior spackle to cover the screw holes, making sure to press the spackle firmly into the hole and remove the excess. Now, we'll let everything dry overnight. Oh, what a beautiful morning to install a flower box, huh? Hi, Ron. How you doing? Okay, guys, come over here, if you wouldn't mind. This is going to be a power operation. Thank you. Andy? Thanks. Right. What we want to do right now is we're going to drill some drainage holes in the bottom of the box right here. Now remember, this window box is going to be filled with wet soil for maybe years, so I don't trust the pressure treatment on this lumber to keep this from rotting out. We need something else. Now I could use a plastic liner like this, but I couldn't find one that really would fit this. So another alternative is a roofing compound. You can buy this in any home improvement center. You simply apply this with a wide putty knife, just like you were frosting a cake. As Ron says, just like spreading frosting. Really easy. Next, we place small squares of weed cloth over the drainage holes. This will prevent soil from washing out. Okay, let's, uh, let's attach this uh, planter to the wall now. I've got a set up over here. We're going to use these angle brackets right here. We're going to mount them in this direction. First thing we've got to do, though, is drill some holes here. And I've got a half-inch carbide-tipped uh, bit in here. And this is a hammer drill. It's actually, it looks like a drill, but it sort of hammers as it turns. You'll see it's going to make this drilling go a lot faster. This is a, uh, called a lag shield, or sometimes called an anchor. It's made of lead. It's going to go right in this hole that we just drilled here. Just tap it in with your hammer. There you go. Just. The L brackets are held in place with two inch long lag screws. Using a socket wrench, Karen and Mandy tighten them snugly. All right, I hope this fits. I hate to have to redo all this, guys. The big moment is here. Okay, there we go, right in the brackets. Okay, looks great, Ron. That's terrific. Underneath, we use additional lag screws to attach the window box to the L bracket. With the planter complete, it's time for us to add potting soil. That's, that's great. Yeah, that should do it. It's ready for the plants. Oh, I love this. Oh, I like the way these, some of these come down. You get flowers going up here. Very, very nice. You know, this was a beautiful window before, but this really completes the picture, and you guys did almost all the work. It looks like it's always been here, but it, it certainly dresses it up. It does. Yeah. It's right with the shutters. Yeah. Thanks so much. You're welcome. <laughs> To view today's projects again, visit ronhazelton.com where you'll find hundreds of how-to videos available 24-7. Free home improvement videos online 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.